Okay, the first time it took like over a year. Both times. Because, um, I don't know, we, we, was, we were very well, stuck. We were very stuck. overall, man. Yeah. It took me over a year within the two different times. Yeah. Like, it was, it was kind of like, but uh, the first time was a lot, lot longer yeah, than yeah, the second time. <laughs> we kind of knew what we were doing the second time around. Yeah, the like, first time was a learning curve. We learned the album the first time we recorded it, like, and then we, uh, yeah. <laughs> then we did a good job. The <laughs> then we recorded time. it the second time. <laughs> I know things are getting tougher when you can't get the top from the bottom of a barrel. Wide open, road of the future now. It's just a fucking narrow. All I know is that I don't know. All I know is that I don't know nothing. All I know is that I don't know. All I know is that I don't know nothing. We get taught to decide. Just like as if I'm back. certainly a learning experience because this is the second time we've recorded it. We recorded it once before and you know it's a journey we try things out some things don't work um, so then we, we tried it we didn't give up. Uh, most other bands I think would have probably uh, something like that could have broken a band up uh, but not the Audible Joes it made them stronger. Involved in it, you know, I mean, especially when we recorded it twice, or you know, you kind of get eventually you kind of get sick of recording the songs, you know, even more sick of hearing them, like, you know, on the top of that, then you're kind of playing them, you know, at gigs, and you know, I suppose you're hearing the songs on such a frequent basis, you know, it just becomes tedious and repetitive, you know, and it's monotonous. Very productive to work with. There was no time wasting. Every time we get here, we got the work done every night, so it was good and we had fun at the same time. So there was never any hassle. When I met them, they were very, very raw, you know. And the one thing that I wanted to instill in them was this work ethic to practice, you know, because practice makes perfect, perfection makes excellence, and then excellence buys you the house in the hill. That's my take on it, and I find, you know. And I just think that just got to practice, practice, practice. And they did, and, and to see them grow from being this raw punk band who didn't really give a shit to now this super tight band and you know you know I could put my hand on my heart and say I'm probably one of the finest live bands in the country at the moment. This dude just came up to us like after a, a gig and was just like, I need to record you. And we were like, fuck yeah, dude, we need to be recorded. And uh, he would turn out to be an absolute legend. And Dave, uh, and we get along really well with him, comes, hangs out, parties, whatever, like, so we've made a new friend through it as well. Like. Dave's the man. Thanks. He's the fucking man. He's the man. The man. <laughs> fuck all these other men. <laughs> Dave's the man. There are some very serious issues that we tackle in the album as well. Um, you know, we do we do deal with a lot of mental health issues as well. You know, I mean, which is, I suppose, uh, can be a sensitive issue for some people. You know, um, but it's one that you know it's it's crucial that it's talked about. You know, and I think only in the last few years in the country people have started doing that. You know, actually talking about mental health. You know, and depression. And you know, it's uh, as I said, w without talking about it, you know, we'll never be able to find a solution or a cure to these sort of things. So. trying to get across is that it's okay to think differently to everybody else. You know, you have a mind, like, you know, use it, like, you know, give your opinion on things, like, you know, just fucking speak your voice even when your voice shakes, when you know what I mean, speak your mind, like, it's, it's, it's a matter of this I wonder if we have, like, a big crowd, I'm just like, why is there this many people at one of our gates? Because I'm always, like, I'm just playing with the lads, kind of thing, like, that's how it feels, like, all the time. But uh, the energy is kind of something that you can't really describe because you never expect it. And sometimes like it's different than others. Not even how you interact with the crowd, but like if the place is full and people are running around in a circle, it feels like the place is actually going to fucking explode. Like, I love that feeling, like it's a serious, serious feeling. Like. But the one thing that did strike me 
is the whole crowd just went nuts for them. And I thought that this wall of death, I'd never seen that before. And it just struck me how well these guys were unbelievable. There was this one time we were playing in Fred Zeppelin's, and it must have been a bank holiday or something. And it was a big, it was the most full of any of our shows I've ever been in, in the sense that there were so many people in like a small compact room. And like we were just looking down on it, and it was nothing short of violence. It was yeah, crazy yeah. to watch. The energy they create in a room. You know, that causes an affinity. You meet them, they're the most approachable, sociable, nice guys that you'll ever meet. You know, yeah, they're punk rock and roll. Yeah, they're offensive. They're young too, you know, but their hearts are in the right place. We don't take each other for granted, like, so they kind of, we do find that comes out in the music, like, because we connect in some sort of way. <laughs> Thank you.